Talk Travel. Uh, we're in Berlin today with the founders, or two of the founders, from Hotel Hero, Florian and Thibault, and of course David from... David, where should we say you're from? And Tech Talk Travel. Tech Talk Travel? Tech Talk Travel. <laughs> Guys, great to have you on the show. Thanks for being here. Thanks David, for thanks for joining us. It's nice to even the numbers up with, uh, with four of us here, so it's really great to have you. I'd like to get started um, with a little bit about your background, like we do with every every interview. Thibault, why don't we start with you? Tell us about your 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 background, how you were inspired to get into, I guess, first of all, hotels, hotel school, and then move into uh, Hotel Hero. And what was your motivations? And then Florian, yourself as well. Yeah, Tell for sure. So, um, so basically, I started off, um, yeah, working into, in restaurants. Um, really got into fine dining, that was really kind of the start to uh, my, my love for service. Uh, so I did that for uh, yeah, one, two years uh, before actually joining uh, Ecole Hotelier de Lausanne, where I actually met Florian, uh, and during that time uh, I had more experience in the uh, hotel business, uh, first of all in the members club, uh, and then uh, kind of uh, entered all that startup world, let's call it like that. Um, through a food tech experience in New York, uh, and that's what kind of triggered my, uh, yeah, my envy to, to start something of my own. Uh, and then uh, we met uh, Julia and, um, and Florian, uh, and that's what that started up Hotel Hero and, and yes, the story behind it. Cool. Right. Yeah, I mean, for myself, I, I was, I think, very similar to, to Thibaut. I was always in love with, with the service aspect, working with people. Um, and when I was in high school, somebody told me like I was not really sure what to do. And somebody told me if you want to go somewhere, if you want to do hospitality, then you have to go to Lausanne. And I was like, okay, what, what is Lausanne? Um, and I had no idea about it because a lot of people ask me, uh, do you have a hotel background? Your family comes from it, and it was not at all like that. But then I, looking at that school, looking at hotel industry, I fell in love with it. And I started out of high school, actually, my first real work experience was in a parking by Radisson in Brussels, um, cleaning 17 rooms a day and housekeeping, so, and doing breakfast service, so really learning the, what it means to work in hospitality. It's very different than being a guest in a, in a nice hotel. And um, then we started our career, I started my, my time in, 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 in EHL, which it's very open, you, you can kind of take out what you want from it. Um, and I had also experience here in Berlin in the Soho House working in FNB. And then during our second internship, actually Julien, um, our third co-founder, he was just talking about this, this, this working as an assistant GM for a boutique hotel in Paris. And he was talking about this random idea of building a platform for hotel software. I was doing an internship in a project management hotel development consulting firm. I was going for the real estate aspect and I had nothing really to do with hotel tech. But um, more and more engaging with him and, 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 and with his idea and Thibault also being there from, from, from the first day onwards, it was kind of we started to, to see that problem, talking to more hoteliers and then falling in love with, with the project. And throughout our time last year in, in Lausanne, uh, we had a great mentor, Ian Miller, uh, at Lausanne, who helped us uh, to, to understand much more of you know, how the hotels, hardware set up, IT. And then we started the project uh, at the time after EHL. And nowadays, uh, it's been two years that we're in Berlin. And, uh, Hotel Heroes uh, up and running, so that's, yeah, that's very nice. Good. Okay, let's talk a little about the evolution of Hotel Hero because you, it has evolved, essentially, hasn't it, in those two years. Uh, it started off as a review-based comparison type website, fair to say? Actually, it was, it was more of a selective platform, so it was, we had um, the companies we selected based on, you know, what are the best uh, Characteristics for the future of tech, so you know, open APIs, SaaS, and all of that. And but we were not really. I think we were searching for our business model. We were searching for what, how can we best help hotels. We knew the problem. We knew that hotels had the difficulty of digitalization, understanding the market. We spoke of it before, trusting also tech and and building that bridge. 
And it took us a year or two, and we worked also a lot as, as consultants uh, for small hotel chains, as independent hotels, to do the whole strategy, vendor selection. And it took us the time to understand our customers better and our problem better. And through this, the, the platform has evolved, our, our business model also, and the whole company mm -hmm. has, has done a, a big step. And, and we've been also very grateful that we had an amazing uh, network of, of advisors and, and, and hoteliers also software vendors who were very supportive and uh, taught us a lot to be able to, to be there where we are today. Yeah, yeah. And I, th I also think that you know, uh, for us it was important to be able to, to self-fund our idea in the beginning. That's why consulting kind of, kind of came around. And, uh, and also I think when we, you know, after a year or so of, of operations, we, uh, we tried going into an accelerator, uh, which was always kind of our aim, uh, an, uh, an accelerator that is linked to hospitality and we, uh, we had a first uh, try to get into there, uh, which was uh, Techstars, uh, the Techstars Accelerator powered by, by Metro and uh, in the second year on, uh, after having done quite some changes to our business model as well, uh, we managed to get into there. Uh, also Julien, uh, you know, getting his skills uh, up on the development side really uh, enabled us to go in there and, and that program really helped us uh, through different mentors, different people we met. Great. Uh, one of which I think was David, right? One of them was David. Uh, and they're still operating today. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, and that, that really kind of also helped us understand what, what were kind of the different um, you know, stakeholders and, and what we could actually build to, to, to do something scalable yeah. uh, to serve, uh, let's say, a, a wider um, number of hotels. Yeah. So, for, the, for those in the, who are watch, watching hoteliers in the industry that don't really know exactly what you do, what's your, what's your elevator pitch? In 30 seconds, what is Hotel Hero? What do you do today? Uh, Hotel Hero is an online platform for hotel software, so we help hotels to discover, buy and also in the future manage their technology better. And uh, so, yeah, we very much focused on the, on the DAC market today yeah. because we think it's very important to, to be, you know, going local to go global yeah. um, because there's a lot of regional vendors, tech is different in every market yeah. and uh, so yeah we want to become the trusted partner for hotels throughout the digital transformation process. Cool. Yeah, and I think some, something to add is like something that we benefited of in our, in our team was kind of this multilingual uh, aspect and, and like Lauren said the, the regional aspect of the industry especially for independence uh, is really important if you want to deliver the, the right message. Uh, and so early on as well, uh, coming back to what the platform is, it's also multilingual, uh, so we're able to cater to the DAF market, uh, as well as the, all the English-speaking countries and, uh, and French. Yeah. Yeah. It's a great advantage, but I can tell you we spend a lot of countless nights translating our whole platform into German, into English, into French. And, uh, but I think it, it is important for, for, for our users because the barrier for you know, tech, the tech language is already huge. If you then add that language barrier of you know having only English words, and then you try to be uh, relevant, I don't know in an Austrian mountains, it's not gonna happen, and you're not gonna be the real help. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I think I think that's partic particularly the case now uh, with with this generation of hoteliers. Maybe in 15, 20 years, uh, you know, everybody will speak. Uh, a very decent English, let's say, uh, and, and that will be less necessary, but at the moment, uh, definitely important. Mm. And, and we see that, we, we really try to, to, to differentiate our, our communication, our messaging uh, to the different cultures as well, not only the languages. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So let's move across to perhaps from a hotelier's perspective, what would be ways or how do you feel that hotels could take on more of a, an R&D approach when it comes to their tech and um, what, what are some of the best ways for them to really apply a neutral tech stack to their environment because that's perhaps one of the biggest challenges for any hotel to truly understand the best ways to go about that. Yeah, but yeah I think what we've What's really one of our motos uh, is, is prioritizing like what do I actually need and what could be nice to have uh, and that's something we always go about when we, when we kind of first talk to a hotelier uh, and so we determine kind of also in the platform not only in our, in our conversations what are really necessary things that any hotel in 2019 should have 
uh, and then depending on my resources, uh, you know, the, the size of my team, uh, how tech savvy or not, how knowledgeable I am, uh, then I can kind of add granularly, uh, you know, different tools to that. I think, um, yeah, when it comes to, to how you build the tech stack, it uh, really depends also on the, on the type of property and what you what kind of guest experience you want to offer? Um, are you, you know, kind of managing your hotel remote? Are you always there? Uh, are you greeting clients or not? Um, but yeah, I think the, the, the cumberstone is definitely, uh, yeah, the, the, the PMS part and the, and the distribution, making sure that that's really there. Um, yeah. yeah, and I think it's also depending on who do you talk to and who are you targeting. Every hotel has different needs, has a different background, as Thibault said, you know, so many different uh, characteristics which, which are relevant, but on the one side, I don't, I'm not a fan of having that the new school, there are only the good ones, and the old school are all, all the bad ones. I think you need to, to see that much more differentiated, and it's also important to, for hotels to have that feeling, especially the ones who are lagging, to, to, to innovate and to digitalize is not overwhelmed and directly telling them you need to change your whole stru IT structure and you need to throw everything out of the window. Because these guys have been clearly showing that they, they are not, not so ready for that. So what we try to aim is to say, okay, well, how can you with the smallest budget do maybe your first step? You get a bit more familiar with changing a bit. You can see how does your team react on it. And then the next step, you can maybe do a bit more. But at the same time, also allowing and giving the, the functionalities also via our platform that the person who wants to change everything directly can get the same resources too. But I think we need to really give a handout to the people who are not going to every trade show, who are not willing to do 15 demo calls and are really into that tech and understand what uh, APIs are or what the whole list of functionalities are. And we need to also accept that this is not their core, as a core part of the business and we cannot start judging them and saying because you don't know this, you are not an innovator because this is not this is not true. It is our job, and we see it as our job from Hotel Hero to to bridge that gap because software vendors cannot necessarily do it. And it's very similar as Tech Talk. I think on that level is helping, giving yeah. the resources there to be able to to yeah. to, to As like water, water everywhere, another drop to drink. There's so much content out there. Um, but you've already referenced it today, we talk about tech stacks. We don't talk as much about customer journey. Mm -hmm. right? And I'm more an observation in the question, but you know, this is often in my past days doing similar business to yourselves with Yield. Um, you know, we used to talk about what, who, who are your customers and how do they behave from point of booking through to uh, returning home again. And if it's a businessman staying for 12 hours, then how would you plan, not technology, but experience around that? How much of that is tech? How much of that is touch? So how would you build service around the technology? And it was a good friend of mine, uh, Anton Hell, uh, who operated Hit Consult. Um, and, and he really championed this notion of uh, don't build a tech stack, build all the different uh, processes around that custom journey. Identify who your core customers are and then uh, take it from there. So with that kind of analogy in play, why do you think it is that in 2019 there's so much content, so much education out there, why is it that that independent hotelier remains so lost when it comes to that planning? I don't know. I, oh, go for it, go for it. I think it's because it is, <coughs> in, in, in the content, you, you find it also a lot, it's like our product is the best, or own, and all our partners are, are the only ones who do it right. And a lot of hotels don't have the infrastructure that they can work with all the new startups and all of the new companies. And, it's, and therefore, there's such a disconnect between what hoteliers, maybe if they start to look at the market, they think that they need, and then they, they look at it and they say, oh no, uh, this doesn't integrate with my current uh, software provider, therefore there must be nothing else which fits. And this is something where we, we thought this is the first step which we tried to, to tackle, is to bring on the one side the feedback from hoteliers and their voice into our platform and, and, and saying what products are good and bad, but also to really um, cut down the time of search 
and really telling, showing the hotels already, these in this category, these systems have an integration to your current tech stack. These have references in your country and um, fit to your size. And this is why we are also focusing on, on the DAC market, for example, at the moment, and not directly saying we're worldwide, because there's so many local players. And to be really relevant, you need to know all the integration, you need to know all of these players. And I think being able to allow hoteliers to directly cut down their time of search so that they can actually spend more time on evaluating would be already a really good step. And then, of course, educating them and um, making it more accessible. But, uh, that's yeah, I, think, I also think on the content side, there's, there's something to do in terms of, anyway, there's a plethora of offers in, in each type of products you can imagine. And sometimes you don't necessarily need to offer uh, a hotelier the possibility of comparing the 10 or 50 different companies in that product category, but actually kind of showing him examples of similar hotels. What is their entire tech stack? You know, what, what are, how are they designing the customer journey and what tools are they putting in place to, to cater to that and customer journey? Ta taking that out and connecting that to the customer journey, exactly as you guys said. It's not one time talking tech stack or one time talking customer journey, but more kind of showing what a tech stack can have an impact on the customer journey. Yeah, and I think to, to finish on that point on, you know, make, making sure that hotels are, are actually managing the transition is, is something to, and maybe a recommendation that we always also give to, to our to different hoteliers we talk to is if you're going to put something in place and implement it, make sure that you have a product champion uh, within your team to actually use that solution. We've talked to a lot of hotels that were, you know, paying one, two, three tools uh, that GM could not monitor the, let's say, the usage per month of that solution, uh, and these solutions were not used by the team. So first of all, they're losing money paying for that tool, and second of all, they're not getting any uh, return on investment. On and that. that's a really good observation, uh, the product champion, because that's a label that fits well with an R&D mindset, right? Because if they're product managers, that means it's not a one-time hit, it's not, okay, tech or process installed, I cannot forget about it, they keep testing it, or they can A-B test it. Yeah, and there's empowerment as exactly. well, and, yeah. and they buy into the... And of course also being a bit bit fair also to many hoteliers on that side, and I think this is often the argument from a lot of, uh, argumentation from a lot of younger vendors who say, you know, we offer SaaS business models so that, you know, you can cancel after three month trial or uh, any, uh, at the end of the month or maybe after a year, but then already building an integration certification for the ho that hotel, the hotel itself has to pay a certain fee to the current uh, TMS provider. So of course that this takes away that testing mindset, which you have in a lot of more other industries, for example, us, we always test new tools and you know if it doesn't work after two months we, we use another one and uh, that takes away that possibility for hotels and restricts them because there's already that kind of initial fee which doesn't even go to the provider uh, to the startup provider but which goes more to the legacy player but i think also on that point we're we're moving in the right direction there's a lot of stakeholders that starting to communicate um, strongly about this for a couple of years now and it takes its time, but I think the mindsets are, are changing and this will also allow hotels to be much more um, much more flexible. And then if a hotel is really like, we are the testers, we want to be full R&D, then they can also work with the new providers who say, maybe we don't have all of these functionalities yet, which the big, big players do, but with us you can be a tech, you can work with third party solutions and you can test it like uh, a plug and play tech stack. So it's, it's really nice to see that this offer and this value proposition, which has been there since we started, actually starts now to become a reality. Because I would say two years ago, it was a lot of talk, but not so much yet uh, actually being there. Um, because we supported a lot of hotels uh, wanting to change the PMS, for example, and some functionalities were still missing for them to be able uh, to actually go with a new player. But like any product, it takes time, you know, feature for feature, and at some point you're ready for the mass market. So. And if you wait for 100%, you'll be always waiting. Yeah, yeah. exactly. So it's, that is it's educating the hotelier that uh, it's okay to buy most of the tech. Maybe you have to build or improvise the rest, if you know what I mean. And it's, it's also, but 
telling the hotelier you have that choice and here are the advantages for this decision yeah. and here you have the advantages for not taking this or working with somebody else because yeah. they can offer you you know maybe you just want that it works and you're very it's very important for you that a certain functionality is there which you will not find in the new solution and if that's your decision then at least the hotelier it's, it's okay but you, yeah. the hotelier needs to know what they gain or what they are missing out and make an evaluated uh, and informed decision and that is for me the key at the end of the day giving them the tools to make the right decision for their business so based on the conversations that you've had with hoteliers up until today, what have you found the most interesting in terms of your engagement with them, perhaps the most eye-opening that was unexpected to you? And what, what, what areas have you felt um, perhaps a little bit of pushback or, or friction when it comes to trying to encourage them or help them? Are there any areas that stand out? Yeah, I think. I think still the demand, like what we're getting at the moment, is, is mainly still on the main, the most must-have system, let's say like that. Uh, but it really depends on the, the type of operation. Uh, we've had small hotels that you know want a lot, uh, and you can imagine that they don't necessarily have the resources to have so much. Uh, but they're just willing to try. I think uh, it also depends on the countries, the regions they're in, uh, and the markets. Some some hotels can kind of take a risk. Uh, because they're maybe seasonal, so during the low season they're going to try something uh, kind of new, and then you have the, maybe the city center uh, hotel that's you know 90% occupancy the year round, uh, and there's really lim limited uh, space for change. Uh, when it comes to like really talking about uh, let's say trends and types of products, I think you know digital keys. Uh, basically changing the customer journey and, and making all that check-in part really disappear and, uh, and, and may, you know, allow the staff to, to make it personal and not just you know, admin work. Mm -hmm. uh, that's the big area at the moment that mm -hmm. hotels are kind of proactively coming to us for. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, that's maybe yeah, for especially, especially in Germany at the moment, you know, with the big talk being in the media and does the government accept the digital um, and the shine or not. And, um, so this, this, this will definitely have also a big trend now, that's what we're expecting to, that there's going to be a lot coming in there because it just changed the whole, there's already a lot of pro uh, hotels who've done it without in Germany before because they said we don't really care and we take the risk um, because that's at the end of the day, it's, it's a decision, it's, it's a risk decision which a hotel needed to take. But for me, something which was eye-opening and I, I which I think also has an impact why a lot of hotels don't innovate so much is the discussion about budgets and how tech budgets are allocated. Um, back in the days it was a lot of you know capex investments so server heavy and all of that in a small uh, opex and um, the whole way of software as a service you know where it's not a license fee which you bought and you know you only pay a small maintenance fee um, or service fee, this changed completely and, and we have hotels coming to us and say we want to work with all the new things and this, this, this and this, but I don't want to pay more than this price which I'm paying currently for my PMS which I bought 12 years ago. Yeah. Yeah. And because, it's just, because the management company pays the opex. Yeah, exactly. And, and, and this is... But this, this, and exactly. Now, and now you come back to that question, who are you as a management company? And, and this, are you a tech company? Um, but by default, it's your product, not just service, but uh, and, a technical service as well. And um, they just don't have the model and the margins yet to be able to kind of justify it. Exactly. And this was for us, I think, where I, at least I think, for me, I, I learned the most in EHL, which had to do with tech. Um, it was not a lot about technology, actually. It was more about the decision makers and how are the structures in hotels set up because this allowed us to really understand okay why is that reasoning you know yeah is it, uh, are they the operators the franchise is it the owner who are we talking to who's deciding on which budgets um, but also just you know the mindset even if it's an independent and they own it themselves they don't think about for example hardware costs and 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 and, and, main, and software costs together so they so it's also for us i think and is a big aspect of education is explaining you know why software as a service you know the product develops itself so you don't have to pay for updates because all of these updates payments they don't think about it as a they don't yeah. you know calculate it down and i see it 
still a lot and, and, and also the tech budgets need just to increase, you know, we are in a high tech business at the end of the day, so you can't be a high tech business but pay the same budget as when you were low tech, mm -hmm. so this, but the shift is coming and as Thibaut said also before, with the younger generation coming in who understand, you know, who are much more tech savvy, I think this will have a very rapid change. Uh, and we're going to see that uh, as a drastic impact into the industry in the next, let's say, five uh, to ten years. Because we hear a lot also from hotels saying, but it's my son who's going to take, <laughs> who's going to take care of this. Yeah. Um, but I think one, one last point on your question is what we see is maybe hotels are, are quite reluctant to touch into technology that, you know, that the guest interacts with directly, whereas maybe back office tools like, like communication between employees and things like that, they, they're way more willing to give it a try. Um, and I think, for example, if we talk like about upselling, which is a big uh, subject at the moment, and, and removing the, all these ancil ancillary services and products from the booking engine, trying to, to sell them you know, at a different time, Uh, these upselling tools, for example, if you want to give it a try and you don't want to kind of break your whole customer experience, uh, you can segment it. So you could look at, you know, uh, a small segment of your whole guest and try the upselling tool on, let's say, a small uh, segment and see how that reacts. And then you can start opening it to more segments and suddenly, uh, yeah. yeah, you see a difference. Uh,